Hey everybody, so um, happy Monday, January 9th. We are uh, right now in front of the vampire bat uh, habitat, our enclosure here with the vampire bats at uh, the Organization for Bat Conservation's Bat Zone. And I have something really special to show you. Uh, this is a mom vampire bat. Uh, what a great mom. Uh, all, all mom uh, bats are incredibly sweet. <laughs> And loving <laughs> until I tried to uh, there we go <laughs> until I tried to take tried to get too close. Let's show I want to show this uh, beautiful wing right here. There we go. This beautiful wing right here is the mom's wing, and uh, she's relatively young. She's a few years old. I'm gonna go ahead. Hold on one second here. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the baby who's now almost three weeks old. Mom is very, there we go. The baby who's almost three weeks old. There we go. There, much better now. Look at that, look at that, how we can see the difference in the size of the mom vampire bat and the uh, baby vampire bat. Uh, this baby was just off of mom uh, about less than five minutes ago. Hi, I know. And she's, she's uh, defending uh, her baby. She's telling me that she doesn't want me to hurt her baby, but look, it's right here. And so uh, the mom vampire bat, this is a common vampire bat, it's called. There are three different species of vampire bats in the world. The common vampire bat is as it uh, kind of, obviously the name refers to, it's pretty common. Um, it is a blood drinker. All vampire bats are blood drinkers. But as babies, they drink mom's milk. And so as all baby bats drink mom's milk, this baby also drinks mom milk, mom's milk. And when I first showed you on the camera, the mom uh, was cuddling the baby and the baby was just nursing from it after being off of her for a little while. The baby's actually uh, uh, starting to make some sounds at about, like I said, three weeks old. They start to crawl off once in a while from the mom and uh, they start to, um, you know, exercise their wings. And by about six to eight weeks old, uh, they'll start even trying to take some first flights as well. But uh, this little baby's got quite a bit more uh, growing up to do as well. But you can see the size is already pretty large for a uh, three-week-old uh, baby. So I'm gonna go put uh, mom and the baby back with the other moms and the baby. So they are all in their nursery right now. Uh, let's see, I think there's five of them. So we're gonna put them back in the nursery and you can watch the other bats inside here flying around. Be right back. Okay, so uh, I know a lot of you have been interested in uh, uh, the vampire bats, especially since we've had some babies. Uh, we did send out an email and, uh, and posted uh, about it. Generally, we're not a breeding facility. We're not really opposed uh, to breeding uh, the bats, especially if we need more of those bats in the wild, or maybe we need those bats to repopulate um, a, a population maybe at a, at a research facility where we're learning about them and learning their uh, captive care, things like that, or, or studying uh, how the bats uh, get along with each other and especially how they raise their young. But here at the Organization for Bat Conservation, we really take care of rescued animals. And, and, these, and, and these animals are either injured, orphaned, uh, sometimes zoos have too many. They they bred too many in a in a in a one location, and unfortunately, then they start getting some stress from that, and maybe even uh, start to injure each other. You could think even about humans. You could think about dogs. You think about giraffe. Whatever it is, you put too many together in one spot, and they're going to be. Um, 
sometimes fighting over resources. So here at the Organization for Bat Conservation, we got some of these wonderful bats from the Brookfield Zoo in Chicago, great zoo. They just wanted to bring down some of their stress and, and problems that they were seeing. Uh, then we ended up getting uh, some bats that were uh, done being part of a, a great behavioral research project at the University of Maryland with Jerry Carter. Uh, Jerry Carter also did research here with our vampire bats. And, um, and we were able to reintroduce some of these bats that knew each other from 10 years prior at the Brookfield Zoo and reintroduce them. Uh, there was a lot of great documentation of them calling back and forth to each other, uh, reuniting because bats, especially vampire bats, are friends and they have long-term relationships. Well, when we also reintroduced those bats just a couple of years ago, uh, a few of those ended up breeding and uh, we had a couple of males that, uh, believe it or not, are hard to tell if they're males or females in about the first, oh, year of life or so. Um, their testicles don't become, uh, you don't see their testicles until a certain time during their life. So uh, this year we were surprised, about three weeks ago, we were surprised because there were two boys that had uh, been born before. Uh, we thought they were girls. Eventually, they turned out to be boys. Some of you might have had that problem. Uh, when you picked up a couple of gerbils for your kids, they turned out to be boy and girl, and then all of a sudden, you had lots, of, lots and lots of gerbils at your house for pets. Uh, so uh, it's not always terribly easy. Uh, same way with our owls. You know, one day, we'll, we'll show you our owls. That's, a, that's another one. Birds are hard to tell their, their uh, sexes as well. Well, so with that, we ended up getting, uh, we have a few females with pups, and it's pretty exciting for us and hopefully exciting for you. So we're going to uh, periodically uh, show some pictures, we'll post some, uh, some video and stuff. And I know a lot of people had uh, questions, so do we have some questions starting to come in? We do. Okay, cool. Uh, um, so uh, the first question is, uh, why are the mother and the baby separated from the other vamps, mm -hmm. and uh, roughly how long are they kept apart? Mm -hmm. Will the other bats accept them back into the group immediately, or do they have to be reintroduced? All great questions. So we separated the the moms with their pups. So they're all uh, so the moms and and babies are are all together right now, and uh, they know each other. They're they're friends. They already hang with each other. Uh, the mom bats live together in a colony, that nursery colony, and they actually uh, form a harem. A fair amount of bats form a harem, and vampire bats do. The harem is really about the females, and so the females stay together as a group, and so taking out a, a part of the group is okay. They stay together. That happens in the wild once in a while as well, if maybe there's a change in roost or predation or something like that, and they need to split up temporarily. We've split them up because we want to make sure we can monitor them, and we can uh, make sure that they have enough food. Sometimes, again, allocation of resources, so competition for resources, for feeding, let's say, uh, could be limited by young males who want to assert their, uh, their dominance in a, in a colony. So we don't want that to happen for the mom bats that are feeding. Uh, the other thing is, is we need to be able to monitor uh, the babies uh, as well. And so it's going to be several months that the moms and, and their babies will be separated uh, until we have a great handle on it. Now the good thing is, and I was alluding to before, when, when we brought bats from the University of Maryland to introduce them back in with the, um, with the zoo bats that we had from years before, this was almost 10 year span, they completely remembered each other, they took up like they hadn't seen, you know, they had seen each other the weekend before. And so as far as reallocation or re, uh, it, uh, reinstituting their, their, um, uh, their friendships, their hierarchy, things like that, not an issue at all. So they're going to do great. Um. On December 23rd, Martina on explore.org, Bat Chat, noticed uh, what looked like a baby vampire <laughs> bat underneath an adult on the floor of the enclosure. What was the reaction of the employees when you found the baby bat? Yeah, so Martina, thank you. Uh, how fun is that, that the uh, vampire bat cam was, uh, and, and one of you or m many of you were the first to notice that for us. Uh, we do, uh, oftentimes we do quarterly, we call them roundups, sometimes we do them monthly. Vampire bats are a little fragile, and so even though they're pretty hardy in the wild, in captivity we're really careful about not stressing actually any of the bats, but especially vampire bats, we're really careful about not stressing them out. So we don't want to handle them too often uh, because it stresses them out just a little bit. 
it stresses me out too going to the doctors or to the dentist. And so maybe it stresses them out for a little bit of the same reason. So we weigh them and we measure them and we look them all over and then we let them go. Um, and we had uh, done that a couple of months prior. So obviously we were surprised. There was a lot of um, people who were very happy because it's fun to see moms and, and babies and being raised. So um, a lot of discussion about, boy, what happened? We look back at records and we could see kind of the, the trail from this, this other acquisition two years prior of what it led to of a couple of uh, males that ended up um, impregnating probably four or five uh, mom bats. What are we currently feeding the babies? Okay, so what are we currently feeding the babies? Nothing. What is mom currently feeding babies? Uh, her mammary glands, her, she's nursing the baby. So all bats, all male, I mean, sorry, all mammals, all baby mammals drink milk. And so think about just like with humans, bats are also nursing from, uh, from their moms. And um, from what age are vampire bats first capable of reproducing? Yeah, what age? So uh, first, uh, I'd love to, to reiterate that uh, bat science and bat uh, research is still pretty new. Um, bats are hard to study. There's not a lot of bat researchers and scientists out there. So unfortunately, we don't know a lot about uh, gestation. We don't know a lot about especially reproductive uh, re re reproducing at what ages. And so sometimes we're unsure. We know a little bit about vampire bats, but it's a range. So it's somewhere about a year to two years old are they able to reproduce. And so that's why we've got quite a, a, a shift in, in, in a fairly long period of time. Uh, what kind of animal blood do they drink? What kind of animal blood do they drink? Primarily mammal, but they will drink uh, bird blood as well. Uh, we have fed them in the past some pig blood, some goat blood. Primarily we feed them cow's blood. And I'd love to take you in to, to show you, too, up a little bit closer. Um, so uh, we, can, we can walk right into the enclosure here and, uh, and take a look at, uh, take, uh, why don't we show that one right here and take a look at the, the, uh, how we feed them. Uh, what we're doing here is we've got a, a feeding device that we can, um, <laughs> that we can uh, attach several uh, glass tubes. And so these are glass tubes right here. And um, then we've got a, a small feeder on the um, bottom. And we have four tubes that are set up uh, for the bats. Now, um, one of our, uh, one of my uh, f most, uh, one of my favorite bats is right here. I'm actually kind of surprised that sh uh, she didn't end up getting pregnant. Um, this is one of my favorite bats. Her name is Mina. And Mina is a, um, there we go. Mina is a, a female um, common vampire bat. I've worked with her a bunch over the last eight years. Really sweet bat. And uh, I've taken her on The Tonight Show and Ellen DeGeneres. And uh, let's see if we can get a little bit of a... There we go. Look at that. So she's looking, looking at us. She's being nice and still. They're very intelligent. Vampire bats are incredibly intelligent. Uh, they have long-term relationships. They get along really well with their friends and their relatives. I'm just going to set her down right here. And there she goes. <laughs> crawls away really quickly. Okay. So let's, let's go ahead out back out and let them... There we go. We'll, go, we'll let them go back to feeding as soon as, as soon as I walk in, they, uh, you can see one of them right down here. As soon as I walk in, they kind of move around because uh, they, you know, they, they're not sure what I'm doing. Oh, and you can see the one over there too. The, the one, as soon as we got out of there, one of the vampire bats hopped over and was like, okay, well, what were they just doing with our food? Did they give us more food? And you can see them echolocating. Uh, earlier when I had out one of the vampire bats too, when I had out the mom, and you could see her mouth was open, uh, that's the bats echolocating. And so what's so incredible about these bats is that they can walk on the ground. Now they can walk on the ground on their hind legs, but they also walk on their feet and their wrists. 
so actually almost kind of on their thumbs. And so that bat right there is kind of, sometimes people say a lot like a spider. And so cool what you got to see just then was how they could pop up and take off. So it's a little bit like those really cool uh, planes that could also go and uh, take off. So those really cool, uh, even helicopters and stuff like that, they can hop eight times higher than their body. So a six foot person would be hopping or jumping 48 feet in the air. That's relative uh, and uh, to their size. How about some more questions? Uh, do they bite humans and do they carry diseases that we would have to worry about? Sure, do they bite humans and do they carry uh, diseases? Everything with teeth can bite. So I have teeth, an apple is in a lot of trouble uh, later on today <laughs> because I'm going to bite into it. Obviously, yes, bats can bite. Uh, we wear gloves when we handle and, and, and work with the bats. Some of these bats, as you saw when I just took out Mina, she knows me really well. We have a relationship together. Some of the other bats, from Fred uh, to Camilla and, and some of the other wonderful bats, I've known for 15 years or more, and so they would never bite me. Uh, but a bat out in the wild would absolutely bite you. It doesn't know you, it's intelligent, and it thinks you might be a predator. Could it pass on a disease? Just like with humans. You don't want to get diseases from humans. You want to wash your hands and not, you know, uh, uh, not always be kissing people, especially strangers, uh, because we don't know what they have, right? Same thing, we don't kiss the bats, we don't handle them with our bare hands, and we're very careful, especially out in the wild. I'm, I'm a bat researcher of 25 years. I am very careful. I do have my pre-exposure shots. Uh, rabies is really the only concern, and rabies in the United States is one of the rarest diseases. So the good thing is, most parts of the world, rabies is non-existent um, and not a problem for humans. If you ever find a bat in your house or, or, or on the ground, never pick it up with your bare hands. Move it, move it uh, you know, over to a tree with uh, using a box or... or thick gloves or a big towel or something like that, but a bat will never land on you and attack you and try to drink your blood. Only happens in the movies. How would you get involved in, uh, in an organization like this? Are there any opportunities in Canada? Oh, great question. So, are there opportunities in Canada? Yes, there are. So, one of the things I would say is uh, email us, and then I'll put you in contact with those people. There are bat working groups. There are university professors. Um, there are also uh, citizen scientist programs as well, so I'd love to connect you with them. Uh, check out our website, so it's batconservation.org, batconservation.org, and then just hit contact. And uh, put in the subject heading that uh, you want to get involved, you want to volunteer. Uh, we have a lot of great resources on our website. Uh, so we have bat house plans, so you can build your own bat houses. You can also buy a bat house. You can uh, plant wildflower gardens and plant pollinator gardens, bat gardens uh, for bats. But you could also get involved with citizen science programs, monitoring bat houses, um, documenting roosts where bats live, and even collecting acoustic uh, information from their echolocation that bats give off, you can record it and download it so that researchers get a chance to use that information. So, related to that, where can I get a bat house, which you just answered, okay. and how high up does it need to be? Okay, so bat houses, uh, just quickly back to vampire bats, vampire bats don't use bat houses, they don't live in the United States. Vampire bats live in southern Mexico, but primarily Central and South America. They live in caves and hollow trees, and you wouldn't put up a bat house for them. You want to put up a bat house in most parts of the world, if not all of them, because they, uh, most bats in the world eat bugs. They eat so many insects, they eat thousands of insects every single night, that they're great to have in your backyard. Putting up a bat house about 15 feet off the ground, facing an open, sunny place. We're also going to have a, a bat house building um, uh, workshop too. So we're gonna, we'll plan one this spring so you can also tune in and see how to build a bat house, where to put it up, and we're gonna show you all that kind of stuff uh, in just a couple of months once it gets a little bit warmer. Um. Are any of your bats uh, ever release, released back into the wild? Great question. If Are any of our bats ever released back into the wild? No, because we're not a rehabilitation center. Rehabilitation means you take a bat that's been injured or orphaned or sick, you uh, raise it, you heal it, and then you release it back into the wild. When any of the bats come here, they have uh, been, uh, there's either been an attempt to release them back into the wild or they can't be. So like vampire bats do not live in Michigan um, and they, these bats were born in zoos. 
we couldn't release them in the United States, and even if we took them to, let's say, Nicaragua, they wouldn't know what Nicaragua was. They wouldn't know where a cave was to hide. They wouldn't know what a predator was. They're not hardwired uh, for these things. They're taught by their moms. And so that's why that, that baby and mom relationship is so important. And uh, is, it, is it possible to bring the cam over to where the nursery is? We'd love to watch the babies grow and the relationships <laughs> that these bats and moms develop. Oh, so let's show you the, let's show you the camera. <laughs> so maybe you haven't seen the size of this camera uh, before. Um, what can we say? It's larger than a battery in your car. Uh, I, it's about this big by this big with, with uh, uh, large poles that hold it up. Um, this, is, uh, this is an awesome camera, far bigger than we imagined. <laughs> so can we put it in the enclosure? Uh, definitely not right now, uh, because it would, be, uh, it would be a little shocking uh, to, to the moms. Um, and we don't want to take up the space that the babies could also be, because they're going to start uh, flapping and flying really soon. So uh, at this point, what we want to do is we want to make it as comfortable and, and little stress as possible for the moms and the babies. And then once they start getting a little bit older, we're going to look at doing exactly what you just asked. So thank you. Uh, do baby bats bite? Do baby bats bite? Yes, right away. They're born with teeth and they bite mom. And so they're biting her because they need to nurse. And so they bite uh, on mom's uh, nipples uh, so that they can um, hold on and also obviously get nutrition. Mom in the wild flies around with the baby attached. And so babies come out with, with uh, thumbnails, uh, toenails <laughs> on each of the ten toes, and a full set of teeth. And so if, she, if those babies did not hold on, they're going to fall off and then be eaten by a predator. So, yes, they definitely have teeth. And uh, are there any other pregnancies currently? There's, oh, are there any other pregnancies? We did separate two other females with the other vampire bat moms who are pregnant. So right now, uh, we don't think there's any other pregnancies in the vampire bat enclosure. We've separated our, I think, five females. Uh, so three of that babies, two will be soon on the way, probably another week or two. It's hard to tell. Again, we're not really sure when they got pregnant, so we're not exactly sure when they will also have their pups. So gestation, maybe somebody either has asked that or, or thinking about it, how long are they pregnant for? Upwards of nine months. This is the longest of all bats, and think about it, just like humans, it's about nine months. Other bats are only about four weeks so this is the longest of all bats is vampire bats. And um, uh, about the food, how do you keep the blood from coagulating in the tubes? Great question. How do we keep the blood from coagulating in the tubes? So once a, um, oh, they were just down feeding again, but as soon as I looked, <laughs> it, it, it hopped away. Uh, we, uh, we go once a month uh, to um, a meat processing place where the people working there actually collect the blood from the cows that they just processed directly so it's fresh. And there is, uh, it's decoagulated right inside the, the, larger, uh, the larger vessel. That vessel we pick up goes into a cooler with, with ice. We bring it right back here to the bat zone. We pour them into small pints and we freeze it. And then uh, the day before, uh, so we have them all dated, the day before we take it out and put it in the refrigerator, and then the next day uh, it's thawed and we put it into small glass tubes. We warm the tubes up in warm, you know, in warm water. We have the glass tubes in, uh, sitting in warm water so that's nice warm blood, and then we put it into the, the, uh, the habitat for the vampire bats. And... Uh... Are the babies in danger when they fall to the ground in the wild? Are the babies in danger? Yes, they are in danger. Babies, if they fall from the cave or or the floor uh, or the the um, even a um, a barn, whatever. If you think about any babies, if they fall, they're far from where mom is. Most bats can't take off from the ground. They don't walk on the ground. Now, vampire bats and especially vampire bat moms are the best. Uh, they nurse their babies, they'll nurse their friends' babies, they'll care for their, their best friends, their adult best friend, their moms and their grandmas. Uh, they will feed other adults, uh, but if a, if a baby vampire bat falls to the ground, mom just jumps down right away, picks it up, and, and flies away. Now, another uh, 
bat mom, like a fruit bat mom or an insect eating bat mom, if a bat falls to the ground, if she went down to the ground, she might be, she might now be prey as well. So she's got to be a lot more careful. Usually the baby tries to crawl over to the side of the wall and then the mom will come down so that, that, that she doesn't have to go to the ground. Uh, but there are a fair amount of predators that are waiting for babies to fall. So there might be a snake or a raccoon um, or even uh, beetles, insects in a, in a cave that live on the ground because the guano falls and that's what they feed from or that they also feed from bats that fall. <clears throat> and uh, just once again, how long again do the babies nurse for? Okay, sure. So how long do baby bats nurse for? In, uh, in the wild, uh, we have almost 1,400 different kinds of bats. And so they nurse uh, anywhere from about four weeks to about a year and a half depending on the type of bat. Vampire bats will nurse for at least a year. So, right, mom's got a long time to be taking care of uh, her baby. She doesn't really seem to mind it much. Once they start getting older, they'll start to feed more on blood and less uh, from nursing. Okay, all right, great. Well, um, you know, I, we were all really looking forward to being able to show you. Uh, moms are doing great. The babies are incredibly cute. Their eyes are open. They're looking around. They're already starting to kind of crawl off of mom. That's when we feel more comfortable with going in and weighing them and, and, and taking a look at them right around three weeks old or so. And so I was glad to show you that right at the beginning. Uh, mom was a little uh, uh, extra, you know, uh, weary and a little defensive, which was great. That's her instinct to be able to take care of that baby. Uh, we got we got to go inside and see where the vampire bats feed from, um, answered a bunch of your questions. Uh, we're going to be uh, thrilled to show you more pictures, some video, and then eventually you'll be able to watch those moms and their babies on a continual basis. Uh, so look forward to a, a, a stricter schedule that we're going to be having of these live Facebook fo uh, posts. And uh, Happy New Year's, everybody. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and especially for those of you who donated uh, to our uh, end of the year uh, Batmobile campaign. Our Save the Bats mobile uh, was a huge success. And uh, thank you, everybody. Take care.